Today's topic, Wagwan v. COVID-19 vaccine. Welcome back to another video, my people. My name is Nick Ardell and I'm the producer of this channel and thank you for stopping by. So as said in the intro just now, we're going to be talking about the COVID-19 vaccine. Why are so many people skeptical of taking this vaccine? Without further ado, let's go right in. Vaccines are so much a part of our lives due to the amazing natural ability that we have to become more fortified against any foreign entity once that entity has been introduced to our bodies. In other words, we give our bodies the illusion of being invaded by a foreign entity. So if and when the time comes that that entity really enters our body, our bodies would be more fortified to fight against it. I hope it's not confusing. But anyway, to quell some confusion, if it was, here's a definition. Vaccination is the administration of a vaccine to help the immune system develop protection from a disease. Vaccines contain a microorganism or virus in a weakened, live, or killed state, or proteins or toxins from the organism. The concept of vaccination is not new. As a matter of fact, in 17th century China, Buddhist monks used to drink snake venom in order to develop an immunity to snake bites. So we can only imagine how much people actually dead from this type of vaccination, immunization, what we'll go call this. You know what? Anything for science. Well, in this case, anything for enlightenment. Edward Jenner is deemed the father of modern vaccination practices. He was the first to scientifically test the method of vaccination from smallpox by injecting uh, the vaccinia virus in a 13-year-old boy and then demonstrating his immunity to smallpox. And many of us may believe that, hey, you know, we're old, so why do we need a vaccine? Well, many of us may or may not know that it is recommended that all of us get a flu shot, a flu vaccine, once a year because as we know you know the flu virus constantly evolves and you know that's why we catch flu over and over and over again well some of us whether some of us like it or not there are benefits to vaccination in the past vaccination has been proven to be very safe and very effective and i'm sure that many of us like myself can boast today that i've never had smallpox because why vaccination Vaccination can save your family time and money. You know, you save your time from going to the hospital, going to the doctor, and we know that time is money. You have to pay the doctors, you have to pay to go to the hospital, maybe a public, private hospital, and you lose money by taking the time off to go to the hospital. Unless you have sick days, unlike me. We just use them as January come. Immunization protects future generations. Through constant vaccination from generation to generation, we will eventually develop certain immunities to certain strains of viruses and diseases. Vaccination can save your child's life. If you don't care about yourself, you will care about your pitney. You know, vaccinating your child will protect them against many viral infections and diseases that exist and are enhanced by our environmental malpractices today. So vaccination and immunization will and can save the children. But if you don't care about yourself, think about the children. So I'll go on for this COVID-19 vaccine. As we know, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. And we can use one example to justify this statement. The Tuskegee, or is it Tuskegee? I don't know. However you pronounce it, however it is pronounced. If you do know, please comment down in the comments below and let me know. The Tuskegee Syphilis Study. Now, this study started in 1932 where there was no known treatment for syphilis. After being recruited with the promise of free healthcare, this study was done on 600 African-American men. And unknowing to them, the process was to study the full long-term effects that syphilis would have on the human body. As we can assume back in those times, you know, African-American people were impoverished, systematically oppressed. They, they, they didn't have the same opportunities that they have now. So this promise of free healthcare, I mean, it must have sounded like gold to them. So why not? So they were being treated for what is known as bad blood, which was a very common term for them back then. By 1947, penicillin had become the recommended treatment for anyone who had syphilis. But these men were given aspirin and other mineral supplements. 
All in the name of what? Free healthcare. By the mid-1960s, ethical concerns were raised, but it was dismissed in favor of continuing the study to see the full long-term progression of syphilis, even though they had a treatment for syphilis. They still opted to continue. For what reason? Just to get some data. By 1972, this story was made public with, as we can assume, great outrage in the community, especially the African-American community. By that time, 28 of the participants had died due to syphilis. Another 100 participants had died due to complications from syphilis, as many of them went insane, many of them went blind, and they developed other ailments due to the, their, their, their status with syphilis. And the sad part is, 40 of the spouses had also contracted the virus, and 19 children were born with syphilis. And again, I'm going to say all in the name of free healthcare. Now, as we're approaching the 2000s, you know, many of these families, they got settlements of, you know, over $10 million outside of court. Bill Clinton, one of the former presidents of the United States of America, came out and did a public apology. Also, Barack Obama did an apology uh, to the survivors of the Tuskegee experiment. And the Tuskegee syphilis studies is just one example of how medical unethical practices have affected us in the past. The father of modern gynecology performed shocking experiments on female slaves. The practice of C-sections was perfected and done countless times on many black slaves, black female slaves. So many of these medical breakthroughs and things that were, were happened now, they were done to black people. They were done to black people who didn't have any choice in the matter or were lied to about the matter. So many of us know, as black people, just have a lingering distrust of the medical system. And anything will come free, especially for the with medicine, we just don't trust it. So focusing now here on Jamaica, the vaccine that we're currently getting is the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine. It compromises of two doses of the vaccine, which is not uncommon for a vaccine. And it showed an effectiveness of about 62% after the second dose was administered in preventing the symptomatic COVID-19 disease. 62% is a relatively small number when you're talking about people's lives. You have two ways of looking at this. You can say six out of 10 people reacted positively after being administered the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine, or you can say 3,800 people out of 10,000 people did not react positively or did not have a reaction after taking the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine. Either way, you'd be completely right in your assumption. We can't sue if there is any side effects. And granted, we know that there are side effects. And from a legal standpoint, I guess this is very this is very smart in protecting themselves. But yeah, we can't sue if there are side effects because, you know, human beings aren't one plus one equal two. What may affect this person good may affect this person bad. And there, there have been some comedic side effects such as erectile dysfunction and stuff like that. But yeah, we can't sue. And it's quickly becoming mandatory for us to take the vaccine as you know certain places and certain things are not accessible to us let's take saint vincent the country where the volcano erupted in a life and death situation where many people are displaced in that manner the vaccines are still mandatory my final take on the vaccine i would assume that a person who has lost a family member or a friend due to covid19 would say an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure and if they had the chance to prevent that person from getting COVID-19 through this vaccine, they would have definitely taken it. From a person who's skeptical, I guess they'd say we don't know how this vaccine would positively affect us. And more importantly, how this vaccine would negatively affect us. But to each his own. It all boils down to this. We just don't understand. And what we don't understand we don't trust. And what we don't trust, we tend to destroy. So we're, many of us are destroying the idea of getting this vaccine. One linkage to this vaccine that we can link to the Tuskegee studies is that the monetary part of it. Jamaica is to roll out an initiative 
that pays elderly persons, persons over 60 years old, $10,000 to be vaccinated. And these are persons that are in need of $10,000 due to the tax administration of Jamaica's records and the amount of money that they're making. So these are persons that aren't get, getting pension to a certain degree. So my thing is, regardless of them getting the vaccine or not, they still needed the money. So why are you essentially paying them then to get the vaccine? Just give the old people them the money because they're unable to work and get it, you know? Help the old people them without giving them the vaccine because we don't know how the side effects may affect them. But at the end of the day, to each his own. Thank you for tuning in to another video. I post a video every Monday and every Friday. Mondays at 3 p.m., Fridays at 1 p.m. And if you disagreed or agreed with anything that I said, you can go ahead and leave a like. Comment down below and let me know. You can hit me up on Instagram at nicklan underscore one. Just to talk, ask a question. I'm always available. Until next time, stay safe, guys.